I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to learn as much as we can about automation. Now then, firstly, what is automation? Well, when we first start working with uh, tracks within a project within Logic, we add audio files or MIDI performances, or we bring in external instruments and we start arranging our tracks. But what tends to happen at some point within the mix process is that we want something about one of those tracks to change. Maybe we want the volume to get louder. Maybe we want the whole track to fade out towards the end. Maybe we want the brightness of a sound to change as it moves from one section to another. And for those changes, we need automation, the process of being able to write or draw changes to what we refer to as parameters within our mix. So volume, for example, will be one parameter. If we want a fade out, the volume needs to change. So what we're going to learn, first of all, is that automation within Logic is available on every single track, and it can affect almost anything within that track, the volume and the pan, maybe, or individual effect parameters that maybe exist within a track as well. So firstly, let's look at how we can start working with automation. So what I've got here is a, a project which has got four tracks in it and the stereo output track, which is here as well. What we're going to do is just press play and listen through to it, and then we'll start seeing how we could potentially bring aspects of this track to life with some automation. Okay, so this very much sounds like a work in progress. We've got one guitar loop in the first sort of uh, section, which then drops out. We've got this kind of strange two bar gap. I think we can use automation to maybe change or uh, evolve the track to fill in some of these spaces and try and make more sense of the arrangement. So firstly, what is automation? Well, the easiest way to find that out is to open up the mixer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna discover, obviously that every track has its own mixer uh, channel strip. And what we're also going to see is that down towards the bottom of those, we've got an automation mode, which is available for every single track. Now at the moment, even though I can see that it says read in every single track, actually automation isn't switched on for any of these tracks at the moment. It's there to be used, but it's not being used yet. So read mode is one of the modes that exists within Logic. Read mode plays back automation which has already been recorded. But what we need to do first is to record some. And to do that, there are a couple of modes we could potentially use. So you can see that when I click down here, read mode is the mode that's uh, at the top of the list. And what I could potentially do would be to use one of these other modes instead. Now, what touch mode allows me to do is to select any parameter. And for as long as my finger is on the mouse and I'm adjusting that parameter, I'll add automation data for it. Latch mode is similar, but what it will do, instead of reverting back to the original setting of that particular parameter when I let go of the mouse, it'll stay at wherever I leave that parameter. And actually that's the mode that I'm going to use. So you can see that what I've done is to select latch mode and now effectively Logic is listening and watching to see what changes I make. Now, the change I'm going to make for this guitar is to the brightness of the auto filter. This is a filter that's being put on this guitar. And what I want to do is to create some changes for it. Now, I can simply press play within Logic and record those changes. But if I want to see them going in, what I'm going to do is actually to press A to open up the automation lane. And you can see straight away that Logic's view extends. It now shows me the uh, this sort of line that's running through the middle of the track. And as soon as I touch the parameter that I want to start changing or automating, we'll see that line being created in real time. I'm not gonna press record, I'm just gonna press play. Now, when I press stop, what I'm going to discover is all of these individual points that have been created for this parameter. So if I solo this track, 
and we listen back to it, we'll hear what I've done, which is to change the tone of this sound. Okay, so, so far, so good. Now then, at the moment, the way that the filter is working is that I'm getting some of that change, I'm getting some of the brightness change that I like, but they, the kind of amount of that is being slightly impeded by the fact that I've got an envelope on for this project as well. Now, these, this filter is effectively um, responding to the envelope, which is down here in the bottom left-hand corner, and I don't want it to. I want it to just simply read that cutoff information. Now, this is the first potential little moment we come to when working with automation where we need to be careful, because if I press play and I decide to switch the envelope off, well, we'll see what happens. Now, what's happened is I'm getting the uh, change to the filter that I want. I'm getting a much more extreme version of its movement. But because I was still in latch mode and because I press play, by switching this envelope off, I've actually made that another automated parameter. Now, I didn't need that parameter to be automated. I don't want to vary the amount of the filter envelope. So what I've effectively done is to create a ramp of automation data or a change that I didn't want. And another really obvious time when we do that is when we play, uh, play the track back and just by experimenting with volume, when we put the other track in, maybe another track, a series of tracks in, what we tend to do potentially is to just move the volume fader to make an adjustment. And suddenly we've created volume automation as well, which maybe we didn't want. That's easily done too. So now what I've done is to adjust the volume because I want the guitar to be louder but oh, look what's happened. Now I've suddenly got volume information and really I just want a static level for this fader, this volume, uh, which isn't going to be changing in the first bar every time I come back to the beginning of the piece and I uh, press play. So what we need to be careful with is that when we use latch mode, when we're finished with it, what we do is to come back to read mode. And what that does is to protect any volume information or any parameter information that we've created, but it doesn't let us add more. Okay, so that's dealt with that, but of course I've got this problem, which I've now got volume information I don't want, and I've even got um, envelope information I don't want either. So this then brings us on to the next sort of part. How do we change automation that we've created and potentially get rid of automation data we don't need? Well, there are a couple of things I can do. Firstly, I can come up to the mix menu. And here what I've got a chance to do is to see that there are a few options, all of which are relating to automation. And here in particular, I've got delete automation. Now this allows me to come through a number of different functions. And right here, what I've got at the top is a very useful one, which is to delete the visible automation on the selected track. Now at the moment, the visible automation is volume. So if I select that, that volume automation is gone now. And so I'm back to where I started. I've got the opportunity to move the fader without that being an automated change to volume. Now then, how am I going to go and find the other automation data that I've created that maybe I want to get rid of? Well, the next thing to know about automation is that we've got a drop down menu here, which is showing all of the parameters which are currently automated. Now, the first one of these I want. This was my filter cutoff, which is controlling the tone of the guitar. That's fine. But I didn't want the envelope cutoff modulation um, to be part of the automated list. So if I select that, I can then repeat the same trick as before, come into delete automation and get rid of the visible automation data on that track. And what that will just leave me with now is just the lane of automation that I wanted and that I created to start with. So that's one really useful feature. Next thing to know is I want to copy this section over here 
to play through the second half of the track as well. So I'm selecting those regions and I'm copying them. And what Logic is going to say is, do I also want to copy the automation data? Now, this is completely my choice. If I select copy, I'm going to get an absolutely perfect sort of second version of this um, ramp of uh, cutoff data. And if I choose not to, then fine. What will happen is it will just stay at whatever setting it was left at. Totally up to me. I'm going to select copy because I want that to be the same the second time round. And every time that box pops up, you've got a choice to make about whether or not you want to take the automation data with it. So, so far, so good. We've got now this sort of undulating tone for the guitar. Now then, what if second time round, I decided that I wanted the automation to be different, to follow the same shape, but to be slightly different, maybe a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit duller. Well, what I can also do with automation is to grab a whole series of points by simply drawing a box around them. And what I can then do, having done that, is to move them all up or all down. So the next thing to know about automation is that we can select multiple points and drag them up or down in order to create offsets to whatever data is there in the first place. So this time, particularly if I zoom in and we can see this more um, clearly, what I'm in a position to do is to adjust this automation either upwards or downwards. So if second time round I wanted a bit brighter, I can do that um, compared to the first time. And again, I think that undulation will be nice underneath the new guitar part that comes in at that point. Okay, so that's working nicely. But the next thing to know about automation is that whether or not you've chosen to draw it in like this or not, we're in a position to edit every single point of data that we've created. So we've seen that we can grab lots of individual nodes and drag them up or down. But what if I actually decide that the shape that I've created here isn't right? I either want it to move more quickly or I want to do something else that just changes it. Does that mean that I've got to go back to latch mode, recreate those lines and recreate it? Well, no, it doesn't mean that at all. What I can actually do instead is to change automation data by redrawing it uh, simply with the mouse. So let me show you how. What I'm going to do is to create a single point here, and I'm going to drag backwards. And you can see that as I do that, all of the data that I've created is sort of being rubbed out, being erased. It's being replaced by a single, what we call node, which is this little point here. And what that's done is to simply drag over all of the other ones and it's replaced them. What I can then do is to create points wherever I want them. So if I suddenly decided that I wanted movement that was a bit more quick, I could create nodes by chopping this region effectively in half each time and then simply just dragging these individual points up and down. I can create these nice smooth ramps to sort of change the way that the tone is going to behave uh, through the playback of this section now. So it's now very different to the second half, but you can see that we've now created these points manually. So there we go. So we've done that simply by uh, using our pencil tool. Now then, what we can also do is to create nodes another way. What I want to do is to drop down to this other guitar part, which is here. And what I want to do is to find a parameter rather than using latch mode to introduce it. What I want to do instead is to go and find a parameter that I want to change for this particular part. I want this guitar to sort of play in two bar blocks with the first guitar being panned slightly to the left and the second region being panned slightly to the right. So it's pan that I want to automate. So if I come over here to the left-hand side, what I can do is to go and find that parameter. Now, when I click on this list, I'm not seeing a lot of options here, but within the main dropdown, I can see that pan is here, and I want this absolute setting here. So this now makes pan the currently selected parameter. Now, do I want to sort of go through and manually create these points the way that I described by sort of creating these little offsets and sort of trying to create a point here where this part can jump backwards and forwards? Well, I can do it that way for sure. But what I'm actually going to do is to undo those steps and come back to the point where I'd simply introduced pan as a parameter. And instead, I'm going to use the regions themselves to create the points for me. 
I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to click on this first region and I'm going to come back to my mix um, uh, menu up here at the top. And this time I'm going to come to create track automation. And what I'm going to do is to create two automation points at the region borders. Now, what that means is that when I select this option, instantly Logic creates two points at either end of this region. Why two? Well, that becomes clear when I create that offset. I want the offset to create a pan value of minus 30, but I want right on that line, the point to drop back to zero. Now, if I go through and I create another two points for this region here, what I'm then in a position to do is to create the offset in the other direction here. And I can do the same thing again for this region too. And then what we'll have is the chance to have this file jump backwards and forwards across the stereo mix. And of course, I can offset this last one as well because I've got the points absolutely on the lines of those individual regions. Let's hear that. Okay, so we're hearing that guitar part jump from one side to another. So this time we haven't drawn in the points manually and we haven't also gone back and redrawn them as we did with this loop. Instead, what we've done is to use the mix menu and the create track automation options to actually create those points for us on that line. And there's one more bit of automation I want to create as well, which is that on this first uh, track up here, which is a sort of pad sound, what I want to do is to create a little bit of variation in this two bar gap. And I'm going to do that by increasing the amount of delay feedback in this two bar section. Within Logic's tape delay, if we push feedback up, it starts to regenerate and get louder. And what I want to do is just fill in that space with a little bit of that. So what I'm gonna do is to remind myself that I can come back to latch mode, press play from the beginning, and when the time comes, I'm gonna draw in a change to the feedback level for this parameter. So there we are, we've got this nice sort of ambient delay that's happening in that space now. And again, if I decide that's too much, well, I now know that I can go through all those individual points and redraw that if I want to and create the shape there that I want. And of course, just to remind you, if that is the change that you wanna make and it's the only change you want to make for this particular track, don't forget to go back to read mode to protect the automation that you've recorded, but to stop yourself from inadvertently adding lanes of automation data that you didn't mean to add. So we've actually covered a lot of ground with automation in this video. We've looked at how we can create automation using latch mode, allowing us to grab any parameter we like and record data for it um, so that we have a chance to animate the individual tracks within our mix. We've learned that we can erase data by either creating new lines or by coming up to the mix menu and selecting uh, the option to delete the currently visible data of the currently selected track. We've also learned that we can create individual automation points at region borders using the length of the files that we're working with to create automation points at various ends. And we've also seen how we can use automation musically to just begin to finesse our mixes, covering spaces like this two bar gap, We've also seen that we can even copy automation data from one point to another. So clearly there's masses we can do with automation. And that's a whistle-stop tour of some of the main features that automation provides. <laughs>